good morning guys so let's uh, have one example of uh, um, a problem regarding the determination of the center of rigidity and center of mass of uh, an irregular structure here so basically we have this uh, floor plan the second floor plan which is given and we are just asked to determine the uh, center of rigidity and, and center of mass on this uh, second floor okay so the columns are actually uh, uh, given in terms of their size so c1 here are all 40 by 40 centimeter and c2 uh, which is actually this uh, column here is uh, 0.30 by 0.50 meters now see so the the uh, uh, dimension is actually uh, shown here so this is uh, 0.3 and this is a uh, 0.5 so it's important to note the the uh, direction of the dimension if in case the columns are not uh, a square column uh, because that will be a key to the determination of its uh, flexural rigidity or simply the moment of inertia okay so the beams are all uh, 0.30 and 0.5 meter deep and the slab thickness is uh, 0.10 which simply means that the mass of the entire area is actually uh, distributed fairly and uniformly all throughout the uh, slab uh, system and there's an opening here which is I think uh, uh, used for the purpose of a stair um, access from the ground to the second floor and uh, there's also a shear wall here which is uh, 0.40 meters thick and 6.5 meters long okay so uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, elevation uh, or sectional uh, view of the the, the uh, frame is actually uh, given here and uh, the focus our focus is actually on the on the uh, ground and the second floor since this is the the uh, the part in which the second floor uh, properties are actually considered and also this uh, uh, part of in which the lateral force resisting columns are are actually uh, um, resisting the, the forces so this is the ground story that is now in question so for the solution of the center of mass or we can abbreviate it uh, as CM we first assume that the mass is, of course is uniformly distributed on the entire second floor area and note that uh, if we consider three areas one big rectangle and two negative areas to account for the opening and the projected area from the re-entrant corner we can actually um, evaluate or solve for the center of mass on the basis of a Verignan's theorem here so this is now uh, actually looking into we're now actually looking into a scenario wherein uh, this whole um, floor is actually considered a, a positive uh, area and this uh, re-entrant part here is a negative area including the opening here okay so let me first set up my my uh, tablet to so that I can use the pen
Okay, so uh, we have now here uh, the, the the whole triangle, the whole rectangle that I'm referring to is the big uh, uh, rectangle which constitute my first area. Okay, and I have here a a small a rectangle that constitute the opening and uh, a small uh, square here a rectangle that constitute my uh, re-entrant corner okay so I have to subtract these two areas here in order for me to get uh, uh, the center of mass Okay, so I don't know what where the center of mass is actually located. So uh, let's now try to solve for the areas. Okay, so this is uh, okay. So the big area here is actually 18 by 12. This is now the big rectangle. Okay, so this is the big rectangle here. And this small rectangle here is the reentrant corner, and another here is the uh, the uh, 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 stair axis. Okay, so these are both negative areas because we are subtracting it. And to take and taking a look at the the uh, values of your uh, moment arms. Uh, x1 so the, the reference of the moment arm is actually uh, from the uh, bottom left corner so let's specify now the uh, reference origin so I think my reference here or my origin is located somewhere here okay so if I'm uh, going to solve for the axis uh, the axis are, are the centroids of this uh, Okay, rectangle. Okay, so these are the the axes. So x here is actually uh, this distance. Okay, x here is this distance here, and x here is this uh, distance over here. Okay, so these I think are. Uh, plainly very easy to to solve so this is actually three meters this is i think nine and this is simply six plus three or twelve plus three is fifteen okay so if i'm going to use the y now the y values my y here is uh, again three my y here is uh, somewhere six meters my y value here is uh, 6 plus 3 is 9 okay so this is referred to this as my origin okay so if you want to refer it from, to, from another uh, reference uh, you may do it okay so this is 9 uh, 3 and uh, 16.5 uh, okay so that's 12 plus uh, 3 is 15 plus 1.5 okay so my crack here is this 15 point no it's not 15 but this is uh, 12 plus 3 plus 1.5 okay so it's 12 plus 3 plus 1.5 so this is a 16.5 okay And for y, it's 6, 3, and 9. Okay, so all we have to do now is to make use of uh, a Varignon's uh, a theorem. Uh, summing up uh, forces or area. 
okay uh, uh, area multiplied by the axis divided by 80 gives you your xm okay and the uh, area multiplied by yi over 80 gives you the yms okay so the total area here of course you can simply add or subtract these two from 216 you get 162 and then multiply this and x1 plus this a minus this plus x2 minus this plus x3 you get here 9.5 and ym is 216 times 6 minus 36 times 3 minus 18 times 9 gives you 6.333 so these are now the ordinates of your center of mass which is at 9.5 and 6.333 Okay, for the center of rigidity, we only consider, of course, the, the lateral uh, uh, force resisting uh, elements or system, only the columns and the shear wall. So the columns at the second floor, uh, of course, uh, is it is not included because it's not the part of the LFRS or yes, okay. So what I mean is in this particular case uh, uh, this column here here are not actually a part of the uh, lateral force resisting elements of this uh, second floor because this second floor is only holding up to is held uh, up by these uh, columns here okay So E is of course uh, given it's uh, 2.5 times 10 to the 7 and if we compute for the moment of inertia the columns uh, of C1 is simply 112 over uh, 112 of, of BH cube so this is 0.4.4 cube over 12 and L is 4.5 so you can, might as well want to uh, make use of the uh, uh, rigidity in terms of 12 BI over uh, LQ. Okay. Okay, so for the uh, absolute rigidity of the shear wall, we have here your ix uh, which is 0.4 times 6.5 uh, cube um, uh, divided by 12 and for your iy you have a 0.4 cube 6.5 uh, divided by 12 okay so if, if you are going to look at the shear wall now my Okay, my uh, shear wall is actually uh, directed uh, in this in, in this manner. So this is the uh, 6.5, and this is uh, the point uh, 40 uh, dimension. And uh, if you take a look at the uh, earthquake uh, rigidity along the x direction so if you look into this direction my ix will be definitely uh, referred to this axis okay so this is my my uh, b and then this is my h okay so if i'm looking towards this direction my Uh, B will be 6.5 and my H will be 0.4. Okay, so take a look at how the orientation of this uh, IX and IY are placed here. So IX meaning to say that your moment of inertia, this is along the X direction. And 
and IY simply means that this is along the Y direction. Okay, such that your R2X and the R2Y now for your shear wall is simply 12EI X over L cube and 12EI Y over L cube. Okay, so we can now define the matrix of uh, rigidity and distances or you can use a table in case you don't want to use a matrix analysis here. Okay, so this is now okay, a table that you can make use of or a, a vector or a matrix. So these are the R1s. Okay, so this is uh, for column 1, column 2, column 3, column 4, column 5, column 6, column 7, column 8, column 9, and then the shear wall okay okay for your access uh, all, all the columns from 1 to 2 here have x uh, equals 0 as your okay as your distance uh, take a look uh, this is 1 and 2 columns Column 1 and column 2 here are have uh, 0 on the x direction. Column 3 and column 4 and column 5 have 6. Column 6 and column 7 has uh, 12. And 8 and 9 has 18. Okay, so those are the x's. While the y's for column 1, column uh, 3, sorry, column, column uh, 3 and column 6 have 0 including column 8 and then column 1 for uh, 9 has uh, 6 column 7 has uh, 6 minus uh, 0.5 okay and then column 2 5 and that's column 2 and column 5 has uh, 12 while the shear wall has also 12 okay so those are the the uh, distances that we are actually referring to this as x okay so this is 0, 0, 6, 6, 6, 12 12 18 18 and then 15 and then for y it's 6 12 0 6 12 0 5.5 0 6 12 so the center of rigidity is therefore computed on the basis of the formula. Uh, XR is summation from I equals 1 to 10 of your R uh, XI's times uh, XI's. Okay? So you simply divide the, this summation to your summation of R XI's. You get 14.987. And YR is equal to summation from I equals 1 to 10 of RYI times YL over summation of RYIs. You get 9.604. And this defines now your center of rigidity CR, which is equivalent to 14.987. Uh, and... Uh, 9.604 okay knowing now the the uh, center of mass and center of rigidity we can uh, finally calculate okay your eccentricity e um, x and y by simply subtracting your xr and xm and for EY, you simply subtract YR and YM. So you get 5.487 and 3.271. So uh, let's try to roughly uh, locate uh, those uh, values here. Okay, so these are the this location of CM. It's uh, actually 6.5 there and then 9.5 here. This is the center of mass. And then we have here your 9.604 center of rigidity and 14.987. Okay, so 
So basically the eccentricity that we are referring to now is uh, this one. So this is the EX, okay, and this is the EY, which is 6.487 and 3.271. Uh, uh, okay, so why are we going to use this uh, eccentricity? So remember that for regular structures, so uh, we have to compute for your uh, torsional moment. Okay, so the torsional moment now is actually uh, measured uh, in terms of In terms of uh, the uh, uh, torsional force, which is assumed to be one, okay. So your m uh, t of x is simply equal to one times e y. Okay. So if we are actually uh, going to compute for torsional moment on the basis of one kilonewton force, shear force here. So if this is your one kilonewton and you have also a shear force here of one kilonewton. Okay, so your torsional moment on the direction x will be one. Okay, so this is the uh, x direction, earthquake force on the x direction. It's 1 over EY or simply 3.271 and for your uh, MTY you get 1 times EX which is equivalent to a 6.487 okay so I have here now a another sample uh, exercise but I want you to do it by your own so you just check your answers uh, here okay so we have here uh, almost the same second floor plan uh, I just removed the shear wall and uh, I think uh, everything is the same except that uh, the the uh, the shear wall is gone here okay so there's no shear, shear wall present so you might as well uh, remove uh, two four six eight uh, two four two four six eight 10, 11. Okay, so I just removed the shear wall. The shear wall is removed. Okay, so this 10 here was removed, but uh, it was added a column 10 and a column 11 there. So two added uh, columns, which are the same as C1. Uh, same as C1 were added okay so it's a 10 minus uh, 1 plus 2 so all in all we have 11 uh, lateral force resisting system okay so I want you to do this exercise and the answer is already given so please verify uh, the result okay so uh, if there are questions uh, we can uh, discuss it uh, after this uh, video thank you very much